Welcome to episode number three of Swift by Sundell Swift Clips, a new series of shorter videos covering Swift tips and techniques. On this episode, we'll take a look at Swift UI and specifically its stacks and spacers. Those are two of the core building blocks within the Swift UI layout system, and they let us build flexible and adaptive layouts without doing any form of manual frame calculations. Stacks enable us to arrange our views linearly. We can do it horizontally, vertically, or along the z-axis. And spacers enable us to create white space between views, which enables us to position our views within each stack. Now, those two concepts might seem really simple, but they can take a while to fully grasp, and they can also be really powerful when combined and can let us achieve a nearly infinite number of different layouts. Let's dive right in by taking a look at a very simple Swift UI view. This one simply renders a text as its body, which gets displayed at the center of the screen. Now, this is already a very interesting difference compared to Swift UI's predecessors, UIKit and AppKit, which would instead render such a view at the origin of their coordinate system. For UIKit, that would mean the top left, and for AppKit, it would mean the bottom left, while SwiftUI instead automatically centers each of our views within its parent. And then we can use stacks to customize how that layout is performed. For example, we can wrap this text within a vStack, which arranges all of its child views vertically along the Y axis. Now, simply wrapping our text within a vStack doesn't actually move it on the screen at all, since the stack will by default occupy the same space as its child views will. But if we add another text to the mix, then we can start to see the effect of the vStack, since it will stack both of these two texts on top of each other. But now, let's say that we wanted to move these two views to the top left corner of the screen. How can we achieve that using stacks? Well, this is where spacers come in. By adding a spacer to our stack, we can push our two labels right to the top of the screen, since the spacer will automatically occupy all of the available space within a stack, which in this case looks like this. We can then use the exact same technique, but on the horizontal axis as well, by adding an H stack, which also contains a spacer. And that way we can push our two labels to the top left corner of the screen. However, we likely don't want to position our labels right at the edge of the screen, so let's also add some padding. This is easily done by simply adding the padding modifier to our root h stack, which makes our view hierarchy now look like this. Really nice. Next, let's say that we also wanted to add an image to our view, and that we wanted to position it in the top right corner. Now initially, it might seem that all that we need to do to achieve that is to simply add our image to our h stack, and while doing so will give the image the right layout on the horizontal axis, it will be centered on the vertical axis, which might initially seem a little bit strange, considering that our labels are positioned at the top of the screen. However, we have to remember what caused our labels to be positioned at the top to begin with, which is this spacer right here, which is not affecting our star at all. Now we could of course go ahead and add another V stack and another spacer, but that will cause our layout to start become a little bit complicated. So thankfully there's an easier way to do it. What we can do in this case is to simply change our H stacks alignment property to instead use the top alignment. That way it will push all of its subviews to the top of the stack rather than centering them, which is the default. Now it might seem that we could actually go ahead and remove our vertical spacer and still have the same layout. But if we do that, we end up with the same centered layout that we had before, since there's no longer anything pushing our view hierarchy up towards the top. Now we could of course just go back and use that spacer that we had before, but it could make our layout code a little bit harder to work with going forward, especially if we want to keep adding new views beneath the ones we already have. So to solve this in a more elegant way, let's start by extracting the views that we already have on the screen into a new view type. Let's call it top view in this case, because we're going to display it at the top of the screen, and it's going to contain the texts and the image that we had before. With that in place, we can now go back to our content view and simplify things a lot. Instead of having all of our layout code within one single view implementation, we can now simply use our top view along with a spacer within a V stack that has padding in order to achieve the layout that we want. We can now see that our vertical spacer is in a much better place and will enable us to keep iterating on our layout and add new views much easier. 
Finally, let's take a look at Z stacks, which enables us to do the same kind of stacking that we've done so far, but along the Z axis instead. What this essentially means in practice is that Z stacks enable us to create new layers within our view hierarchy that get rendered on top of each other. For example, here we're adding a new text that gets centered on the screen just like before without affecting or being affected by the layout of our other views. Now, set stacks also give us a lot more control when it comes to how we position our views on the screen. Instead of just being limited to either the horizontal or vertical axis, we have full two-dimensional control of our alignment. For example, we could use that to push our new text to the bottom right corner of the screen by using the bottom trailing alignment. However, we can still assign different kinds of modifiers and properties to a Z stack that will affect its entire view hierarchy. For example, if we would move our padding modifier to our Z stack instead, that will affect both our labels and our star, as well as our label in the bottom right corner of the screen, which enables us to achieve a really nice layout in a very clean way. That's a quick look at stacks and spacers in SwiftUI and how they can let us achieve really flexible layouts using very little code. You can find all of the code samples from this video at swiftbysundell.com slash clips slash three. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then please let me know by subscribing to this channel. And you can also find Swift by Sundell on Twitter, at Swift by Sundell. Thanks a lot for watching.